Hi everyone, this is Nico71 and you are watching the design secrets video of my Nissan Skyline Super Silhouette in LEGO Technique, where I will explain you how it works and how I design it. Let's go! This LEGO Technique model portrayed the 1982 Nissan Skyline Aeros Turbo Super Silhouette, also called the KDL30, in 1 to 13.5 scale. It measures 35 cm long, 16 cm wide, 10 cm high, is equipped with 43 mm wheel on the front and 49 mm on the back for a weight of just below a kilogram. It is beatable in two versions, motorized or manual, with rear wheel drive, steering with steering wheel, detail working L4 engine, openable and removable elements, pack in this wide body monster look with custom sticker and 3D printed wheel cover. You certainly know this car from the video game Gran Turismo 2 or the 7s, being one of the most impressive cars but also a little devil to drive with great power to wave ratio only on the rear wheels. The Nissan KDF30 super silhouette while based on the F30. Skyline with its particularly black and red tone and is sometimes confused with the next version, the L31. It is equipped with the LZ20B turbo charge of 2 liter with 570 horsepower on the rear wheel only, which explains the large size of the rear tire. It complied with the Super Silhouette Group 5 rules, which stated the racing car must not modify the bonnet, the roof, rail panel, and doors to keep the silhouette intact. So, of course, the Japanese engineer modified the rest and gave it the particular white body monster look as well as make a new tubular chassis. The Japan Silhouette series starts in 1979 till 1983 with the Skyline but also the Silvia, the Bluebird from Nissan as well as cars from other manufacturers like Toyota, Mazda or BMW. Its race debuted what in May 1982 and it did extremely well shulking up to 2 wins in the year and 5 wins with the next one with the Asemi team. Today, it remains an incredible car, spitting flame on the side with a monster look reminiscent of Group B rally car we have in Europe. Let's go back to my LEGO model. As stated before, it is available in two versions, manual or motorized. So, I will present you first the drivetrain and the steering function to explain how I have managed to create the both version in one chassis. For explaining that, thanks to Carmock channel, which made this awesome animation, go check his YouTube channel if you like LEGO 3D animation. As you can see, the railway is connected to the center shaft by a differential and bevel gearing, which goes to the fake engine on the front. The electrical motor drives this central shaft using spur gear, like that, when the electrical motor is removing, the model still have the fake engine working. On the steering, the servo motor which is placed on the side to drive a gear on the front rack which is placed above the wheel in order to locate the fake engine behind. On the other side, another black gear takes the movement to the steering wheel with a CV join. Luckily, the car is so wide compared to the original one that the steering column can pass on the side of the engine without colliding with the steering knuckle. Then, when you want to have the manual version, just disconnect the servo motor and add this small build to create a more handy end of god. Both versions have this wall on the roof to put the end of god knob that can be stored underneath the black panel behind the rear glass. The battery box is located in the back, in the place of the reservoir. It's compatible with the Bevis brick, but also Chinese 2.4 GHz receiver like the Kada one. All this enables to keep the features of driving the fake motor and the working steering wheel. Let's continue with the openable and removable function. First, the door can be opened, revealing the interior but without the frame reinforcement to enable a quick swapping of the element. The rear truck can be removed, as shown before, and is simply put on a rear with two pegs, but also half connector to place the wing at the correct height. The most important part is the hood, which is made in one part as real. It is placed on two pegs on the front and one on each side, ensuring a good positioning. It reveals the fake engine, which is removable too, thanks to a CV join which has no friction on the axle and two parts which hold it laterally. 
It used the same design as on my Citroën Traction, which brick build crankshaft, which makes move small to L pistons, ensuring a very compact build in I. It is centered in place with half stud placed pegs too, and have some detail like the exhaust pipe, the red intake, radiator, and of course the Nissan green color engine with sticker on it. Let's talk a bit about that sticker and the other non-Lego part that you can see which truly make the difference. The sticker has been drawn by Ultimate Collector Sticker. We based our work on a diecast model with pictures. We draw everything and scale it by measuring the Lego model. And the result is gorgeous. We made of course adjustment for the Lego design, but it brings the nice racing touch this model deserves. So, thank you Will for your work and I put a link in the description to buy the sticker sheet if you are interested. The second non-LEGO part is the 3D printed wheel cover made by GT Crea Cars. He redraw the original rims based on the pictures too, then print it using SLS technique and I paint it in gold color. The front and rear model are different regarding the offset as real and there is a shape inside to fit the rim so pay attention when you put it on your model as well as handle with care as the extremity is fragile. Nevertheless, the quality is insane with very small detail, much much better than classic FDM and easy to paint so many thanks to him for this work, again link in the description for the kit. If you do not want to use the 3D printed wheel cover, I have chosen a rim that can be swapped in other color, the pearl gold one. So, you can use it instead of the grey one. If you know the rear tire, it will tell me that the original rim is not available in pearl gold. This is true, but here's a trick. I use the same rim as in the front, but compensate the lack of width with 4x4 rune plate inside, as I did on my Honda MP44. Therefore, I can use this large tire which looks better than narrower one and use more widespread rim. Finishing by the last collaboration, but this time for original LEGO parts. The parts provided by Alpine Brick from Austria. Why talking about parts? Because it is also an important part which makes a difference, having brand new parts, especially for the exterior to avoid scratch and color problem. So, Thank you for Alpine Brick for the collaboration. I recommend of course the store, which have a large stock, fair price, but above all, no PayPal or handling fees, which is very convenient when you want only small quantity of parts for different parts to perfect your design. Again, link in the description. Let's talk now about the design. I will not explain the building process in the detail as it is impossible to sum up months and works, try and retry in only some minutes. I will not know how to start. On the design itself, I made several videos about it. I recommend the series of the Western Star Trek to know how to start and the Citroën Traction about some detail which makes a difference. To sum up, homogeneity of the design, surface treatment and perception of proportion over 100% accuracy. I will prefer to give you some tips and tricks I used on the design to let you know how I use it. Starting with the front, you can see the hood which is made around the red mud guard with beam, panel and tails. The angle of the bonnet has been very hard to find to have the correct shape of the real car. I tried different combinations of lever, road, etc. but the best solution was this construction where the bonnet remains on a tow ball attached with an axle with stop. It is a bit smaller than a pin, but not so much like a half stud. At this scale, 2mm makes the difference, so it is half half a stud. You can also see how I made the bonnet vent using many small 3x1 panels, but the trick is to fix with bar instead of axle. In order, they can be angled with friction and use the connector on the correct side to avoid the cross hole design which doesn't look very smooth. You can see the black vents which is made with cheese grid, positioned a bit recess in the hood thanks to a bracket, which is fixed using the stud instead of half pin. Every part of the front face is slightly angled to have the correct line and avoid the bulkiness. The trick here is to use, for instance, hinge fixed on a rotation point so you can combine two rotations like on the headlight. The side part of the headlight is also angled on a pin and made with slope. 
Speaking of angle, the front spoiler is made with regular teal but articulated in the chassis underneath and used 2x3 teal fixed with 2x2 jumper to create a half stud offset to position them as close as possible of the side panel and use the collision between to angle it properly. In the middle, you can see that the pivot point of the door is placed on the alpha stud to not collide with the A pillar and make a good visual connection with the B pillar. Expect to see a lot of that trick because this is the key at this scale to place the element correctly. For instance, the steering knuckle used half connector to place the wheel correctly in the arch, but also on the back tire as the same height to keep the car slightly tint in the front to give the aggressive look. And so, as the tire is bigger, the arch is positioned much higher with the entire bodywork as well as the door using half connector and beam. On the top of that, the roof is positioned also in a half grid using against half connector fixed on the chassis to lift the car easily. And that is why it used half bin on the B pillar and this small one by one rune plate with all to use the bar to fix the A pillar connector with the correct length and angle. Now we are on the roof, let's talk a bit of the front part of the roof, which is slightly angled part using half bin, red panel and the black bin. You can see at the center that the antenna is fixed on the bracket for recess it a bit, but I use the cheese slope on the other side to fill the gap and hold in position. At final, the wall assembly is fixed on the roof, but also rests on two tow balls on each side of the A pillar. Next, move on the back. First with the C pillar, which is made with black connector to make the door frame, which hold the red part for the bodywork. You can note the use of the 4L red axle to fit the color and the shape I need to not collide with the red panel above. The rear window is attached on the chassis using flexible axle which match well the wing panel of the truck. Speaking of the trunk, it's pretty standard in a way this is a single part which is made in LEGO grid. Combining with the half stud offset of the rear axle and the bodywork, it gives the trailing shape of the rear with side black panel but I used some trick to have a smooth design. The first is the combination of the new red half pin to fix teal and the round teal to fill the gap underneath the panel. The same technique applied on the side of the front to avoid the bulky edge. Second is the building of the rear light, which use many brackets, first to add the red strip above, then to lift a bit the rear spoiler, which is made in cheese slope in order to fit well the side view of the car. Finally, you can see that every part has been chosen carefully regarding its color to avoid the colorful result. For instance, the side skirt construction without the 3L blue pin, the red pin with axle instead of gray one, or the red 4L and 2L axle instead of blue pin. Small detail but contribute a lot to the look. So, what's to conclude? Well, this was the most important project I have ever done. First, in terms of work, with two intricate and upgradable versions, so two instructions, compatible with different electrical sources like buoys or CADA, with custom sticker and pretend wheel, and so sticker guide, and a lot of filming, including this maybe too long video. But also in terms of LEGO design, with many attention to the detail, how it is built, the sturdiness and the level of playability slash demonstration with the removable element, with keeping a great exterior design, so the model has nothing to be ashamed of against real scale model. In general, the perfection is achieved not when there is nothing more to add, but when there is nothing more to take away. A sort of subtracting design. I do not pretend this is the perfection, but if it looks simple with all the elements at the correct place, this is surely because underneath it is not as simple and all the detail had been carefully designed in the most simple way to create the most complicated things. To my opinion, this is the pinnacle of what I can do at this scale. So, if you're interested in, please have a look to the description where you can find all the instruction links as well as the partner who contribute to this project, Caramog Channel, Ultimate Collector Stickers, GT Creators and Alpine Brick. Thanks all, take care, play well, bye.